Welcome riders to your race planning route tutorial for the 2021 race through Poland. I'm going to walk you through using the individual parkours provided by the event, along with our premium level route planner tools, to put together your complete race route, show you how to make edits and changes, and add in additional information along the way. We'll then look at how easily you can break up your entire route into daily routes and then place them into a collection for easy organization. First up is to take advantage of the premium trial discount token provided by the race. Once you have signed up for a Ride with GPS account or signed into your existing account and have confirmed your account level is at premium, click the Route Planner option in the upper menu bar. This loads the Route Planner and you're ready to start planning. I'm going to hop over here to the event page and we're going to look at the routes and the way that they're named. You'll notice that each route contains the letters RTPL3 in them. Back in the route planner, in the upper left corner, click Import Existing, and then type in RTPL3. You'll notice that we load some results in here, which are the official race route parkours. And you can confirm that by noticing the author is Race Through Poland. If you'd like, you can select all of the parkours all at once and load them all into the route planner at the same time. We'll load the map and you'll be able to see and then select the individual parkours. At any time, if you'd like to clear the map and start over, simply go up to the upper right corner and click clear map. We're gonna do that here in this case because the strategy that we're going to use for this video is to select the start parkour and then CP1 and just load those first two into the route planner. So I'm going to select the start parkour, which means that's the first part of our route that we have planned. Now the basics to route planning are to simply use your mouse or trackpad and click along roads that you would like to create your route on. You can click on the route line and hold down your mouse and drag and drop the route to anywhere uh, you'd like it to go. You can also, using the control point feature, uh, click to add control points or remove control points. Here we're removing control points and now we're adding control points. And you'll notice that in between those two control points, we can now click and hold and drag that route around to make some edits to it. But what won't happen are any edits outside of those control points. So control points will be used to lock off certain sections of a route so they don't get edited. If you make an error, you can always just click undo and undo those errors. And if you go too far, you can click redo and redo your previous actions. We offer a number of different map types that you can use as reference in the map drop down box in the upper right corner. Here we'll look at satellite mode, which is a good time to remind you that we do offer street view in the route planner. To take advantage of that, simply click and hold the little man icon and then drag it over the map. And if you hold it over the map, we'll highlight all roads that have received street view in blue and to view a street you can simply release your mouse and we'll show you the street view. We offer a number of OSM maps and also we allow street view in all of our map styles. So if OSM is your preferred map style to plan your route, that's great. You can still use street view using that map style. We do offer a heat map option in our route planner. Toggling this on will show you the popularity of millions of trips that have been uploaded to our system and where people are riding. The heat map is also available for any map styles that we offer here in the route planner. So if you'd like to use this as a guide to get through a town or city with the most popular routes, or use it as a guide to avoid popular routes or rides, you can do that. We also offer a number of map display options under the settings options. You can turn on cue icons, which are the little blue icons, in addition to distance markers. 
Here we're hovering over the cues and you can click a cue to see which one, uh, to see what that cue says. And then at any time you can click settings and turn these off. We also offer the ability to add in custom cues. These are additional pieces of information that you can add anywhere along the route to get notified of. These act just like any normal cues that are generated when creating your route. They will display like a normal queue on a Wahoo or Garmin. Or if you're navigating using our mobile app, we will give you an audio alert and read whatever you type into the notes section aloud, just like a normal queue. This is a great way to get yourself audio reminders for anything that you want. Maybe there's an optional turn, or you want to get a notification that as you're leaving a town, this petrol store is the last place for X number of miles to pick up uh, food or water for a resupply. If you add that in as a custom queue, you will get notified of that. You can also add points of interest anywhere, both on the route or anywhere on the map. These will serve as visual notifications. Uh, so you can get yourself, set yourself visual reminders of food stops, water stops, places to pitch your bivy, whatever you want. You can click and hold and drag them around for different locations, and you can add in points of interest for anything that you want. Well, here you'll notice that I've made an errant click and, and clicked off of my main route here. So using the control point option, I'll show you how to easily fix a misclick. So we're gonna remove that control point, add in two control points on either side, and then we're simply gonna click and drag just ever so slightly on the route line to correct and remove what we call a route spur there. We have a powerful elevation profile at the bottom. You can drag your cursor along and see your position on the route. You can also click, hold, and drag and make selections with the elevation tool. And as you do that, you'll notice there are a number of options that appear on the right-hand side. First one we're going to use here is the ability to change the color of this route. So let's say you would like to route onto a gravel section. Uh, you can change the section that's gravel to a different route color. We also offer the ability to delete a selection of a route from the elevation profile. Let's say you had a large section of route that you wanted to reroute. I will click the add to route option to let me continue planning the route. I will continue planning the route. And then when I'm satisfied with my new route, I'll simply click the green dot that represents the start of the second part of the route. And that will join the two together as one whole route. Now for time's sake, I'm going to simply make a few clicks. And when you're satisfied with your route as you approach the next parkour, just like we had previously done, simply click the green start icon for that parkour and you'll join your route with that section. I'm gonna click save down in the lower left corner to save my work in progress. And I'm going to rename this start to Parkour 1, since this route represents the start through Parkour 1. Now, if you're done with planning, you can simply click View Route and view the route that you just saved. Or if you're going to continue planning, simply X out of this box and return to the route planner. Now I'm ready to import Parkour 2. So I'll go back to the upper left corner and select Import Existing. Type in RTPL3 again and I'll select CP2, add to planner. And I now have my start to parkour one route and the new CP2. I will click start to parkour one to select the route that I've previously planned. I will click along the path that I would like to take. And when I am satisfied, I will again click the green start marker that represents the start of parkour two. And now I have the start all the way through Parkour 2 
as one route. I will click Save again. And I have the option now of changing the name and overriding my original route, or I can save this as a new route. In this case, I'm just simply going to overwrite and keep one route. Now again, for time's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in the rest of the parkours and the finish to then make an entire race route. Click Add to Planner, and we will load in the rest of the parkours. So I will go back to my original start to parkour route, and then I'm going to click the start dot that represents the start of CP3. And now I have a route that is the start through CP3. I can hover over the route on the left and find CP4, click the beginning of CP4, confirm that that is the finish, click the start of the finish, and now I have my entire race route, and I will now save it. And we can choose view route to now view the entire route. Now, this route is quite long and you likely will not ride this entire route all in one go. So now what we're going to do is quickly break the entire route up into individual daily routes. So I will select what I feel I will ride in the first day in the elevation profile click Save As, and then choose a new route. And I'll then give it a name, and click Save. And we've created a new route that represents day one. I will clear the selection, And now I will select what I feel I'll be able to ride on day two in the, using the elevation profile. Click Save As, and then a new route, and name this day two. I will then continue this process for the duration of the route, all of my daily routes. I'm now going to go up to the menu, upper menu, and select Jump To, and then Collections. Collections are a great way to organize a specific set of routes. In this case, I'm going to create a collection for all of my daily race through Poland routes. I'll click New Collection, give it a name, click Save. I'm then going to click Import Routes and Rides, and we'll see that at the top will suggest your own routes and rides, and sure enough, there is the entire route plus day one and day two. Click Upload, and we will then process and upload those routes into this collection. In the next video, we'll cover exporting files to Wahoo and Garmin devices, in addition to na using navigation and offline maps with our mobile app from the collection on your mobile phone. Thanks for watching, and if anyone has any questions, please email kevin at ridewithgps.com and we'll be more than happy to help you out with whatever you need. Cheers.